All right, let's get this started. Let's get this started. Um, <clears throat> trying to get this up on the switch so I can see uh, questions and stuff. All right, looks like we're good. Cool, we got it. We got it. Cool, cool, cool. I don't know how many people are watching. I wonder if we can be in our chats. I don't know. Uh, put that down. Let me set something else up. How's everybody doing? Did everybody uh watch Once and Always? Did you watch Once and Always? Was it fun? Was it fun for you? All right. Will you give me chats? Will you give me chats? No. No, I can't give you chat. All right, whatever. I got it. All right. We are starting. It's a live stream. I don't know how how good this is going to be. Um, and it might be choppy. I'm doing this on my phone. I don't really have a, the best. Uh, I'm going to turn that down. That's annoying. Yeah, that's me on the switch. Um, I'm a little nervous. I, I don't usually do live streams. But, you know, this is going to be a live Q&A. I don't know if I'll be able to see y'all questions, but uh, I'll be going back and forth on my laptop and the switch, and hopefully I can see the questions since uh, my phone is recording. And is again, I apologize if it's choppy. Uh, I got Xfinity. Uh, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, and this is just a test run, just a test run to see how it goes. Uh, if it's not going to go well, then I don't have to do it. Um, but I'm going to try to answer your questions about once and always and just talk about it. I'm taking notes myself for the... Um, for my spoiler review that I'm going to be making probably tomorrow. So yeah, if you got questions, I'm probably going to answer those in the spoiler review or your question is going to be in the spoiler review. But I'm going to just do a rewatch. I'm not showing any footage or anything. I don't want to copyright strike. I don't even know how to do that on live. And I know I need to stop touching my nose. I'm on live. Uh, but I want to watch it. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're doing once and always. So yeah, if you uh you know you're sitting at home, you're watching me, and you want to hear me commentate, and you know you just want to throw your questions in, let's watch it together. It's a live rewatch. It's a watch party. Let's get this going. Okay. All right. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Shout out to the fan that got me this shirt. By the way, I really like this shirt. It's a dope shirt. I'm turning down a little bit. But yeah, like, what do you guys think about it? Like, so, like, I've been, like, looking at reviews and stuff online and on TikTok and been seeing some uh, some criticisms about it. And the one thing I found, um, I can't remember where I saw it. I think it was on Facebook, but somebody reshared it from Twitter somewhere. But the best criticism I saw was that this is very cheesy. It's corny. The suits are bad. The acting is terrible. Uh, the CGI is campy at best and like not even better than the you know the 93 graphics but that was what Power Rangers was and for all that said this is 100% a 10 out of 10 for me it's like it has its flaws don't get me wrong it has its flaws we'll talk about that more as you know we do the rewatch but this was what I wanted. This is everything I wanted in Venom, and a little bit more. And then there's still stuff that I wanted them to do. Uh, but watching the opening scene, um, comment below if you cried. If you was one of the people that cried, like at any point during this, just comment below. You cried. There's no shame. There's no nothing. I cried too. There's one particular scene when we we'll get to. I'll talk about it. But I cried. Um, but like seeing like Robot Rita and the Rangers, the OG, like the opening scene is supposed to be all the OG team, Tommy, Trini, Kimberly, Jason, Zach, all of them. And then they like explosion and then boom, Power Rangers uh, once and always like, oh my God, that's so dope. That's so, oh my God, that is so dope. I don't care. I was, I'm, I've been watching this all day. I'm the biggest kid. 
I'm the biggest kid when it comes to Power Rangers. If this was like everything I wanted. Uh, I like the close-up fight choreography uh, in this opening scene. Uh, you can tell the grunts aren't Jason and Jay, uh, uh, Tommy and Kimberly, but then there is one scene where they straight up use the Morphin Seals from 93 uh, Morphin Time, uh, Power Rangers. Deadly Serious! I, I like that. Like they, I, it looks like the only thing they made this uh, adult was adding kill and deadly and things like that. But again, those are things that were missing from Power Rangers. Like that first. All right, all right. We have to read this thing. Hold on. That's not Trini's voice. Just robot reader was about that smoke. Oh my god, just so devastating. So devastating. Like, I was, like, one of the questions I had going into this was, like, I know they're going to kill off Trini in the show to make that canon, but how they're going to do it. And I was like, let it be, like, a tasteful off screen death. Let it be, like, we just, like, hear the aftermath of it. No, no, no. We see her get hit by a dark energy spell and just blown up, just blown to smithereens in, in front of our face, like, that just was not trauma <laughs> like come on like, like there was so much trauma in that one scene it just blew her up drinking water if you ask him it's just water Ming does need to know, but like how they told Ming in this was um, interesting at best. Um, very interesting at best. Like, like I guess the, did she just walk to school? Did she just walk up behind him? They didn't hear a school bus, a door locked, and they're just in there having a conversation in her house. And they're like, we shouldn't tell her, we should, and then she just hears. Poor Ming. Poor me. <laughs> the acting in this is so terrible. It is so terrible, but that's what Power Rangers is. Power Rangers is cheesy and campiness and bad acting. Like, like this was intentionally done to be like this. And they knocked it out of the park. Like, for all what's said and done, they knocked this out of the park. We gotta have the uh, obligatory training montage showing that she can actually do martial arts because that was the whole thing for MNPR was that they all did martial arts out of suit and that's what they filmed the majority of. I guess I, I can't see nobody's questions on the switch, so uh, let's figure that out. Because I'm sure y'all are asking questions. I'm not 100% sure, but I would assume so. Oh, if I had major premiere or something? I don't know. There we go, live chat. All right, it's up. So, yeah, now I can see questions that no one are writing me. All right, so this thing, um, just listen to this thing. They're coming up. There is after they told me, after the one year later thing, they're going to the funeral uh, a year later, which I have to research that. That's kind of weird to me. She, they're having heart to heart with uh, Zach and Ming, and you know, Uncle Zach, like Uncle Zach. Uh, <laughs> this was nice. Zach is a congressman in this, by the way. All right, so you hear them morph off screen, 
And when you hear it, it's the 1993 voices. You hear their voices when they morph. So I thought that was a nice little touch of an Easter egg that they did bring in their original voices there and tried to bring it in as much as they could. But you can hear it, and then you can not hear it. Like in that opener, none of their voices were of the original actors. Those grunts and stuff. And they brought back Snizzard and Minotaur. So Snizzard, I know for a fact, was voiced by Brian Cranston, um, Walter White, Zordon, uh, Malcolm in the Middle. That's Snizzard. And I believe also Minotaur, which is why they brought those two specifically back. But I think they brought back Minotaur because it has a relationship with Zack. That was one of the monsters that Zack had to deal with for the Monster of the Week that episode. Uh, but either way, great choices. The only uh, they could have brought back uh, the the pudgy pig, which would have been interesting. But I feel like that's more of a Kimberly monster of the week episode. Uh, so like them bringing back Snizzard and Minotaur was really good. Uh, and then they're all robotic. Oh, so I had to look this up. Shout out to my homeboy David. He he sent me a, a text message. You're gonna get a lot of credit for this. But uh, if you go back to that grave scene. Go back to the grave scene where uh, they knocked the grave over and it said Henry Graves. That was the voice actor for Ninja uh, who passed away. And I didn't know that. So thank you for bringing that up on today's spoiler review. Those legacy figure toys that they use are going to sell out. <laughs> They're going to sell out if they haven't already. They're trying to use Kim Lee's grunts now. So, yeah. Alright. 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 Full fledged. I'm going to admit. The plot, the storyline of this was like. Weird at best. But that's what Power Rangers. Excuse me. That's what Power Rangers was. Power Rangers was cheesy campiness and action and fight scenes and stuff. And that's what we got. Like, the, the plot was, like, weird, but whatever. It was that. <laughs> what? I, I asked myself, why didn't they just teleport? They could have just teleported away into the command center, but they specifically got into the rag bag to drive away. Like, Min already knows your rangers, like, and you take her to the command center in, like, 20 minutes anyway. Red Bug 2. <laughs> Rita just dropped Cranston throughout this movie. Like, they don't even refer to Billy as Billy half the time. He's just Cranston. And, like, they're really cashing in on that Walter White thing. And they do drop the teenager with attitude thing. Matter of fact, I think Alpha has the line where he's like, oh, you're raising a teenager with attitude. And I'm like, uh, but I mean, yeah, she's a teenager with attitude. She's dealing with the grief of losing her mom, who's also a freaking superhero. She just went her whole life without, like, ever knowing, like, like, even when Kat comes back, she's like, oh, I was at JJ's karate practice or something. I'm like, he's going to know you wasn't there. Like, how many times were you, like, with your kid, um, and then you had to just teleport away for ranger business, and your kid doesn't know you're a ranger, or they just think you're an absentee parent? I don't get that. But in Power Rangers, you can do that, you know. In Power Rangers, you can do anything. Yeah, she's definitely a teenager with attitude. She got the teenager angst down. And that was part of the best acting, uh... I don't want to say best. Like, I don't want to critique their acting like it's bad. Like, I think all this was intentional. Like, it was intentionally that they acted this way. 
And it's great, and it works, because it, what was Power Rangers? Like, if any nostalgia they captured, it was definitely that cheesy feel of, like, 90s-ness. And they kind of did their best to recapture the 90s in 2023. So, yeah, Rita's, let's talk about Rita for a second. Um, well, no, we'll talk about it once they do that uh, that breakthrough. And again, I'm sorry, I didn't give a spoiler warning, but like it's clearly spoilers for this. If you haven't seen Once and Always, like please stop watching. Just spoilers. This is spoilers. program like pro, uh, Alpha 9 to do that? <laughs> when did they program that in his, his programming? Flashback time. But when they do the flashback, I don't. Okay, no. Uh, it is there when it turns purple and stuff. All right, so if you haven't seen my top five questions going into Once and Always, they definitely answered one of my questions verbatim. Uh, I don't want to say verbatim. Huh, I just noticed that here in this scene, it, it wasn't crap. So. This too wasn't cracked because of Andros. This too was cracked because of what Billy did. So, huh. Huh. Five rewatches and I just finally put that part together. But anyway, I'm at the part where it's revealed that Billy created Robot Rita. Um, this brings up a couple things. The Z-Wave theory, first of all, that like not only is confirmed, but they're expanding upon it. And they added to it because I figured... The Z Wave and something with the Z Wave was responsible for why Robot Rita came back. But as stated, they were looking for Zordon. And how Rita explains it, like Zordon's energy wasn't the only thing scattered in the Z Wave, it was Zordon's energy plus all of the evil. So, like Master Vile, uh, Rita Repulso, Goldar, uh, Lord Zed, Mondo and the Machine Empire, uh. Uh, who else? Divatox, uh, Andromeda, uh, Crones, you know, technically, maybe even the Psycho Rangers, no, not the Psycho Rangers, that's me pushing it, but all those villains, like, they could go back and revisit this, like, because at the end, Billy's like, I'm not going to give up looking for Zodan, even though I killed two people, a Power Ranger and Alpha 8, who is sentient and is a person, uh, He's still going to be looking for Zora, so he's going to bring back all these other villains. And I can't remember how they brought back Z uh, Lord Zed and Dino Fury. Uh, I don't think it had anything to do with the Z-Wave, but they brought back Lord Zed and Dino Fury. They brought back Robot Rita and this. Um, so Mondo and Roto, uh, Rito Revolto and Mondo and the Machine Empire are next if they bring back like old villains and stuff, which I'm all about them bringing back old classic villains. Uh, I know the Disney era people, uh, people who were fond of the Mighty Morphin era might not like that, but I'm for it. I'm for it. Because if we get the Machine Empire, we're almost guaranteed to get an answer to what happened to the Zeo powers and what's going on with that. Alright, alright, time out. So, teleporting in 2023. I get in 1993, you can sneak off and go to the bathroom, do whatever you gotta do to teleport, people won't think of it. But there are cameras everywhere, like doorbells have cameras, cars have cameras, bathrooms have cameras, like there are cameras everywhere, everybody has a camera in their pocket. How are you gonna sneak off and hide your identity and like teleport in a big giant beam of color that you are wearing, by the way, like they're still wearing the colors that they are in this. And teleport and to, like still keep a secret identity. I think that's unrealistic, even in the Power Rangers universe. More training montages. Monsters, 
Oh, all right. So they confirmed Buzz Blast. Buzz Blast is an Andrew Grove, which we knew it was because of Dino Fury. They said Buzz Blast has an Andrew Grove derivative or whatever. But here, Ming pulls up Buzz Blast on her iPhone, whatever. It's definitely an iPhone. And, you know, they're at Ernie's Juice Bar, and we get the, the hip hop keto scene coming up. I love every time she morphed and tried to use the same two tiger morpher to morph and couldn't. I love that. So we're going to have fun with that. I love that. And like, it's morphing time. Oh, wait. Well, I can do it for real. Hold on. What is it? It's morphing time. Wait. Nope. It's morphing time. All right. Proxy power coins. Proxy power coins. Here we go. Proxy power coins. I got one right here. Here's my proxy power coin. Let me put you in. Bam. Proxy power coin. And um, turn it upside down. Turn it right way. Because apparently you put your hand in like this. It goes morphin' time. Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> Rocky. Oh man, I got so much to say about Rocky. <laughs> this this. Oh my God. I I again. I've been watching this all day, and every time I watch it, I am just that six year old again, excited with this. Like, uh, I don't want to take my stuff down, but I got all my my stuff up here. Uh, it feels good to be surrounded by all my Power Rangers stuff and watching Power Rangers. So one criticism, like one negative I do have is he did not bring back the original composer from uh, season one through five of Power Rangers. Uh, Rob Wilson, I'll put his name in the spoiler review, I can't remember right now, but the guy who did, you know, Go Go Power Rangers and Go Green Ranger and White Ranger Tiger Power, uh, Action Boy now, Action Girl now, We Need a Hero, uh, all, the guy who was behind all those great in-show songs and all those theme songs throughout the Mighty Morphin era was not composing music in this. We didn't have not one single outside of the instrumental version of Go Go Power Rangers, we didn't have not one original Power Rangers song going up, and in this fight scene where Rocky and Cat comes back, and they're like, same power, uh, new people, same power, or whatever, they, come on, having like an action boy now, action girl now, or we be the hero playing in the background, or remix, or we new version of it would have just been perfect, but we don't get none of that. Now, I'm not mad at the music choice, uh, I, like, they definitely are doing the scoring to where the music is telling the story in these scenes. And I do appreciate that because that's not something we didn't get in Power Rangers until the space season and then therefore afterwards. Uh, then you go to the Disney era where they just use stock music. But, like, I just wish, like, we got one action boy now, action girl now, or we need a hero. Like, come on, we need a hero is like that song. Like, that would have been perfect for that. We need a hero. Um, I'm ranting. I know I'm ranting, and no one's asking the questions, so this is just me pontificating to myself and the people that are going to watch this later. I love this. I love this, that Boca Skull went into business and did a, like a bulk supply store thing, like Costco or BJ's. Uh, I think this is dope. Okay. The, the monster threw this chick off the off the balcony and Rocky had to just jump and save her. That's some like sick stuff that you don't usually get in Power Rangers these days. I didn't like this ex machina thing that they can be tracked while morphed, but yet Rita knows all their secret identities and who they are, their birthdays and everything. So to hide from the monsters, they gotta just demorph and teleport away. And then you know he hits the trash can, he's like, I'm trackable, and I was like, Yep. Yeah. This is cheesy, can't be Power Rangers. This is the stupid, dumb plot stuff and the lines I expected. Like, chef's, chef's kiss. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Chef's kiss. All right. 
We get Aisha and Adam in their SPA, which uh, I don't think they say in the show, but it's definitely Space Patrol Alpha. So they're setting up Space Patrol Delta with this, uh, which I think is dope because we're like two years away from that actually taking place or the year that it takes place in. So are they saying Billy also helped design the SPD powers in some degree? I wish we had got more. Like I know they come up at the end and share that that end scene together, but I wish we got more from Aisha and Rocky. Especially, I mean, not Aisha and Rocky, but Aisha and Adam. Especially like having Aisha, Adam, and Rocky on screen at the same time, and they were the three that replaced Jason, Zach, and Trini. Uh, just a little bit of interaction between them. I'm sure there's like there has to be a deleted scene or something of them like they could have like all had their power coins and did that thing you know that would have been cool or something like just some reference to them and the peace conference would have been uh an extra reference would have been great Ernest Juice Bar. Ernest Juice Bar. But this is something I want to see in Power Rangers too. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, she got slammed on the counter. Jesus. whole scene is funny to me because Rocky's only here in the juice bar for B-roll for whatever Zach is doing in his hip-hop keto scene. That's the only reason why Rocky's in this scene is for that. Oh god, the CGI of the putty is just turning into like mud clay was like That was part of some of the worst CGI in this whole thing was like seeing putties getting putty. All right, Zach does hip hop keto and they make it a thing. Mean get something like, are you hip hop dance fighting? And like, it's cool, but no, no fault to Walter E. Jones. Um, you know, clearly he's in the best shape of his life, if not like greater shape or whatever. But you can tell he's missed a step. It's been 30 years. He's missed like a step. That was a little, they could have sped up that footage a little bit to kind of feel it, like made it look like how it did back then. But like, they, you know, I don't know. But he's he's in prefer, perfect shape, him and Rocky. Like, I can't complain because I can't do it. But they missed a step. All right, the command center, the new command center is underneath Cranston Industries, uh, which I have so many questions, like, like no one noticed, like, colored rainbows teleporting in and out of the building, or, like, they don't know that Billy was the Blue Ranger? Like, it would kind of be obvious, if he's a tech mobile that he is and stuff, it would kind of be obvious that he was the Blue Ranger if you work for him. 
All right, then you got Billy and Rocky teleporting off somewhere to go do some more stuff. You know, you got to give Rocky stuff to go do. Well, I know they're going to the scene with Cat, which we'll get to in a second. I didn't even realize th this thing. Um, we'll, we'll talk about when we get there. What do you think it means to be a ranger? Let me know in the comments. Because, um, I mean, she wants revenge, yeah. And revenge doesn't make for a good ranger. But, like, she did selfless things. She was trying to save civilians and stuff. That thing won't let me morph. I really like seeing Zach as a as a father figure in this. Like seeing Zach as a father figure is like, I mean, he's an uncle, he's an adopted parent, but he stepped up to the plate like more than Billy did. Billy was there, but it was like Billy's just there to help out financially with me. But it's Zach that's there on the day to day, helping her train and like helping her deal with the loss of her mom. So it's big ups to Walter Jones, like. This was just as much of a, a movie for him as it was for Walter Jones. Uh, he is Walter Jones. It was much of a movie as it was for Walter Jones as it was for uh, for David Yost. Like, they both, in their own ways, stepped up to the plate. I love seeing both of them be leaders of the team or co-leaders of the team, given what happened, um, losing Trini and then having the other Rangers captured, and then they come up with the Pandora Protocol of bringing the extra Rangers. Seeing them lead the team and, like, rescue everybody, that that was real big. This was, like, like hands down, this was the best episode of Power Rangers, like, in a long, long, long time. This was... This is going to be one of those things we talk about for forever for the next 30 years. Like, once Ranger, always Ranger. And the legendary Super Mega Force battle, which I got a rant about that coming up. And and uh, Forever Red. Like, we'll, we'll, like, I hope this is a gateway to seeing other future uh, Power Ranger specials. Not only set in the Mighty Morphin era, but the Disney era. I would love to see the Disney era Rangers team up. Like, you get, uh, say... You get Time Force, Ninja Storm, Dino Thunder, SPD, Operation Overdrive, even though they can honestly not be in it, uh, Mystic Force, RPM, and who else was in the Disney era? I'm probably forgetting one. But you get all the Disney era teams together, and you give them a once and always type of reunion special. I think that would be dope. Um, or like even just like getting all the original MNPR members together. Like I know... Uh, you know, J Jason David Frank, before he passed, he declined to be in this because he wanted the original Rangers or some other Rangers to get more credit because he wants to retire from being the Fist of the Franchise. Uh, we didn't get Amy Jo Johnson because she wanted more money and she wanted to direct, and they didn't really do that. And then um, we don't get Austin St. John because he had legal issues going on, but I'm sure if it wasn't for that, he would have definitely been up in this. And even the traders behind this said they wanted... The original cast, like all original cast, it was going to do the main thing. Uh, we would have had JDF, Jason, and Amy Joe in here, but we got what we got. And for, for that, we got something good. Like, like, yeah, the writers did, like, yeah, they just wrote them out of the story all together, but like, I think that worked. It really worked. Like, you know, one thing that I've been thinking about is like, now that JDF is gone. Who's going to take that mantle of the face of the franchise? Like, he was the fan favorite from 1993 on and became the face of the franchise. He was only supposed to be in Power Rangers for 14 episodes, and they were going to kill him off like they did uh, old dude in Zoo Ranger. He was going to die in Mighty Morphin and then go on to do Cybertron or VR Troopers. But by the end of the Greenwood Evil arc and even by the end of the Power Rangers season, 
like Jason David Frank was just the fan favorite. So they brought him back as the White Ranger and like now it's kind of stupid to think about it. Of course he's the White Ranger, but back then like he lost his Green Ranger powers. Like even at the end of this special they do that clip that tribute to Jason David Frank that was taken from season two of Power Rangers when he lost his Green Ranger powers in the beginning and before he came to White Ranger. They was giving him a send-off. And we didn't know he was coming back as the White Ranger. It was a mystery. It was like all summer long, we was like, or however long that break was until they came back, was like, hey, he's the White Ranger now. The, the light power or whatever we gave him, he's now the White Ranger. And Kimberly fainted. Like, that was a big deal for us. Back then, Alpha, send us alert. he just created invisible. He created invisibility, and it's just sending the archives of the basement somewhere. Invisibility tech. One time, use invisibility cloaks. And she's about Ming's about to waste this invisibility cloak. She just uses it to stick out of command center. Teenagers. All right, so we're in the parking lot of Cranston Industries, and we see like what a Maserati and like a Harley. Like who, who, whose cars are those? Like clearly we know the Rad Bug has to be Billy's, but who are the other three cars in this parking lot? And how much money is Cranston Industries bringing in for their CEOs to be driving whips like that? I'm in the fucking car. We got a fucking car. All right, big props for them doing this, for them just throwing that one-shot line in there. They didn't even have to do that. But me driving up in the rad bug and the dude's like, hey, hey, they got my boyfriend. Big props to them for just throwing that in there. Um, they didn't have to because it was unnecessary, but they did it. And, you know, they're shedding away a lot of those mandates that they couldn't do before empowering this. So it's nice seeing this now and then being just driving up and just like power driving into the putties and like yeah that was dope it was lame but it was dope then she figured out how to get the rag but the fly then the, then the boyfriends hug and embrace each other that's dope like that's dope like like come on like if power rangers can be tolerant you can be tolerant Rita was just there waiting like it was a trap for me but it was really a trap for her that, that's Power Rangers <laughs> alright alright Rita was about that smoke every time she showed up she was like I killed the yellow ranger yo mama dead you use uh, Mantis style oh good luck Trina used Mantis style ask her how that went you can't Rita was about that. She every single line she let you know she she was not to be messed with. Like just like in Mean's face, I killed your mommy. Ha ha ha! And I'm just like, God dang, Rita, let up, Jesus. All right, we're in the final act now. Final act. Another criticism. This could have been like maybe another extra 20 minutes or so. Like there's a scene that I wish they had did where they're actually combining the Zords together individually. And then they do the power coin thing and insert the power coins. And like I wish they had did that, but whatever. Show that their energy is connected to our friends. 
So Rita's grand plan is to steal powers from other rangers that they captured. And they captured a lot. Like, I got a list. It'll be in the spoilers. Uh, but they got, like, you know, they got, like, almost all of Beast Morpher, almost all of Lost Galaxy. They got, you know, the MMPR team, the original team. Uh, they got a few Dino Thunder members and the Phantom Ranger. So she got a lot of people. Oh, that that's another thing. So this whole time, like, since they introduced the Phantom Ranger, we never knew who his identity was. And in the comics, it stated that it's a... Uh, somebody from Altar or something, but I always thought the Phantom Ranger in Turbo and then again in space in Lost Galaxy was, or in space, was Billy. I always thought the Phantom Ranger was Billy, but clearly they, Rita captures the Phantom Ranger. Uh, you can screenshot it uh, in a little bit past this point when they're morphed and they're fighting Rita. You can screenshot it. You see the Phantom Ranger. He's on the bottom right side underneath... Um, underneath the, uh, the, the the bottom shelf, and he's just on the shelf by himself, chained up, it's the Phantom Ranger. So we don't know who the Phantom Ranger is still, we just know it's not Billy. Um, but I always thought it was Billy the whole time. Another thing, I don't think we ever seen the original Mighty Morphin team like use their weapons unmorphed. So seeing Billy summon his power blaster, unmorphed was like some big, Big ishness right there. <laughs> <clears throat> the space that Rocky just made, trying to slow motion punch. Billy sniping with the power blaster. <laughs> they just will not. We will just not call him Billy. All right, all right, all right. So Trini got hit by the same spell. She got blown up. Ming, unmorphed, get hit with the same spell. It was enough to, to sacrifice and be good and deserve the power to be a, the Yellow Ranger. Something's not adding up there. Like, I get it. Okay, her mother's spirit is inside the morpher. Um, I'm about to cry again because they're about to do the thing. But like, I get it. It, the, I get it. It's a loving, touching thing, but it practically don't make sense. Ming should be dead. But this was the part I cried. I, I cried like the three first three times I watched this and seeing her mom's memories in her eye. Like, oh man, she's watching Netflix and seeing all of her season one and two of Power Rangers and seeing everything Trina get to do and has done. And like it's becoming worthy of being the Yellow Ranger, and like the torch of the Saber Tooth Tiger coin is being passed down to the third person, and it was like fucking perfect. Oh my god, it was so perfect. I cried. Yes, I cried. And there's another two scenes where I cried in this, but I cried. And then we're about to get to to the actual morph. Got to get ready. It's morphin' time. Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, Tyrannosaurus. I like that being like is in front in this morph and she let it and then she's like, oh shit, I'm a ranger now. Why didn't... Rita create more monsters. Like you would have think by now she would have known that just relying on the putties to defeat the Rangers is not enough. But if you had enough monsters, because they've done this several times, she could have defeated Rita. I mean, she could have sent like five or six monsters instead of like fifteen putties. That's all I'm saying. So I like that they use the power weapons and like, especially like they use them with deadly force in this. I like they don't look like toys. Like in the 90s, they look like toys. And here, they look like deadly martial art weapons. I don't know what Mantis knew that was that, uh, that Ming just did, but whatever. And then, you know, she she jabs them in the nuts. Like, she jabs the buddies in the in the putties with, with the same two tiger daggers.
And this was a little choppy, like, she threw Snizzard out, then we get that slow motion of him landing on the moon, and he technically looks big in that already with that slow motion. Then she do the famous line, make my monster grow. It lands, and instead of it electrifying the ground, it's like a mist that makes Snizzard grow in robot form. Giant. I don't know. I mean, it's different. And this right here. Like, Billy Power lands in the test from behind. Like, come on. Like, come on. Zoda teaches you to face your enemies from the front. Zoda teaches you to be honorable and be like a knight. And, like, you don't attack your enemy from the backside. Where did Billy learn that from? Alright, this, this is the greatest uh, 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 abomination to all the Power Rangers, what they did here. The Zords, and when they summon the Zords, and how they do it, straight 90s look so much better. Like, it looks tight, they're all coming out the original way, then they come up and team up, and like, alright, yeah, they look fake there. And then, Alpha do this shit, transmorphizing to the moon, and then green screen white, you're on the moon. Why? And I wish we got more from battle mode. Like, battle mode is their tank that they just fire weapons and stuff. And then they, like, you know, 3, 2, 1, march. And then, you know, they combine the mechs. I wish we had got that. Plus, you know, I wish we got them putting the power crystals into the Zords and combining the battle light, uh, the tank mode, and then going into the giant robot. Like, you only got two rangers in the Zord right now, and the other three are still fighting that one other monster. And, 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 they didn't have to do this whole thing CG. They could have, like, once they formed the Megazord, they could have went back to the, the foam suit thing. That would have been so much better if they had did that. Just went back to the foam suit or the guy in the suit version of the Megazord once they combined into robot mode. Uh, and then you don't have the Mastodon shit when he calls the Mega Power Sword, which I thought was just Power Sword. I know Jason, you have the really Power Sword now. Then it comes down, but is it Mega Power Sword or is it Power Sword? I don't know. I remember Jason just yelling Power Sword now. <coughs> she technically almost hit Zach with that. And then I like this because it three rangers solo a monster and defeat him. Uh, and like there's a certain guy, Jeremy G on, on TikTok, and me and him go back and forth a lot about like MMPR era, but like seeing three rangers defeat a monster by themselves without a combined weapon, without help from nobody, without a megazord, adds to their feet. And I'm gonna bring this up to you. Shattered circuits can't keep a bad witch down. They were almost was gonna put the B word in there for that one. They brought Pandora into this. They brought Bendora into this. They brought the Japanese actress into this. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, I love that this is how they're ending this. Like, like it's the perfect time story story because they don't go back in time. They are about to and stop and win the day before it happens. So not only they reset the current team and gave us hope for the future, but they didn't have to go back in the past to change anything. They didn't have to go back and change anything, and they retconned and put in uh, the Yellow Rangers' death and made that canon to the end story of Power Rangers. Uh, you set up the new Green Ranger, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, 
they set up a lot. And like this was perfect. Like I don't I get I get people's criticisms of this. It's not the best. It's not 100 percent But for those people like me who grew up watching this from day one, who were fans since they were six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, who still watch it now, this was personally just for us. They didn't make this for anybody else other than us. Tiger daggers in the Rita, and then they like, oh my god, this is dope. Ah, ah, it was perfect. And then Zach just blow a hole in her chest with the power axe. By the way, if you know the original name of the power axe from episode one. Put it in the comments below. No cheating, but I know it. I know the answer. But, like, they had different names in the first couple episodes for their power weapons until they just went power sword, power axe, power lance. What were those names? If you know those names, you'll become my favorite subscriber or whoever you are. By the way, like and subscribe if you're enjoying this. I don't think you are because I'm just commenting, but... Or less than any questions, but hey, I'm enjoying this. This is like my seventh rewatch of this. I got like three different cameras recording me, and this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. I had fun doing this. I don't care if nobody watches this. I had fun doing this live. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. I'm ready to get back to JJ. Yeah, parents love us. All right, so they rescued all the Rangers. Uh, SPA is there, Aisha is there, uh, Adam is there. They're taking the Rangers to Aquatar to, you know, get healed and get their powers back and get their energy back. Um, and then, you know, they're just dropping Easter eggs after Easter eggs after Easter eggs in this. Uh, so Kat and Jay and Tommy are married in this. They have a son named JJ who's in the comics, who does in the comics take up the mantle of the Green Ranger or a version of the Green Ranger powers with the green shield, but with SPD outfit. So that's going to be kind of cool. And with the SPA there, I think that that's where the next one and always special is going to be, where we get these same five Rangers, Cat, Mean, Zach, Billy, and Rocky. And then, you know, you're going to have something where JDF or Tommy in show retires and passes his powers down to his son. And you basically are creating like a young Avengers version of Power Rangers where you got Ming now as the new Yellow Ranger, JJ will be the new Green Ranger, um, and then who's to say that they'll bring in other characters, maybe like current cast members to reprise some of the original roles? Who knows? They could do a lot. And to be honest, it looks like Cat, Rocky, Billy, and Zach can uh, really all are, I should say, Catherine Sutherland, uh, Stevie Cardenas, Walter E. Jones, and David Yost could just reprise their roles and be Rangers once again for the foreseeable future. Like, they're all in great shape. I've seen them all at cons. They all still work out. They all still are clearly in Power Rangers, even though this is Walter Jones and uh, David Yost's first time being back ever. But Stevie Cardenas has been in this before. Uh, Catherine Sutherland has come back before. Uh, she, she only came back once, and she was in the uh, legendary battle, and she was just walking with her in her turbo pink. But we know she still has her turbo pink powers. We also know she still has her Zeo powers. We also didn't get like not a clue question to what's going on with the Zeo powers in this. Oh, uh, this scene at the end is so touching with uh, with Billy, Zach, and Mean just sitting together at Ernie's Juice Bar, and like they're a family. They're like. They're an adopted family, but they are a family nonetheless. And, you know, Zach was the first Black Ranger in Congress, and Billy Cranston is, like, Steve's job in this universe, and Ming is in high school. So she's perfect to be the next Saber Tooth Tiger Yellow Ranger. Or Tiger Ranger. If you like Zoo Ranger, she's Tiger Ranger. Oh, oh, did y'all notice? Did y'all notice that when Ming morphed into the Yellow Ranger, she didn't have a skirt? Like her mom, because of the Sentai footage. Like, did you notice that? Yeah, I did.
Yes, I'm not limited to possibilities. Maybe I shouldn't give up on sort of. What do you know like? So I like that they add this new thing to the Morphers that the Morphers has the memories of their past users. Um, and I guess Ming's the first one to unlock this ability, but I think that's tight. It's retconning, but it's tight. And then this, like this, because like in the show, in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Billy and Trini were like best friends. Uh, Billy would like go on the spectrum and be like more phenomenal, affirmative, and all this and that. And he, none of the other Rangers could understand him but Trini. And it took time for her to train and understand what he was saying. But Trini was always the translator for Billy. Um, and then, like, yeah, she was the one that helped Billy get over his heist in the episode. I was watching that earlier uh, yesterday. And all the things they did. And then here's the song I was talking about uh, when they when JDF left the show for the first time. After he lost his Green Ranger powers, even though it was a facade, but it was a, like it's a loving, touching memory. It's it's a good. I love that they did this. I cried here too. I cried here too, and I cried after when they did the opening retreat. But just seeing this again, seeing Zach with that hair, seeing Amy, Joe, and Jason, and Tommy, and Triang, oh, just seeing them again, like, cause we couldn't like, cause we wanted like. We want all of these people to do a reunion, and two of them are gone now, and the other ones couldn't come back for one reason or another, but, like, they, they did the best they could with this, and they excelled at that. This was tight. They recreated the entire original opening, shot by shot, almost, with the footage from the movie. Like, come on. And then they did then and now, except with me, because she's now... And, oh my god, yes! Yes. I wish Billy had more glasses in this too. Well, I guess he got contacts. Oh man, this was epic. This was so epic. Um, last thing, last thing uh, before I end the live stream. Um, we don't get an end credit scene. So after you see this, there's nothing else but just regular credits. We should have got an end credit scene with Cat going back to JJ, maybe we see who JJ is, maybe we don't, and then him just wearing something green, and something with SPA on it, or SPB, or Space Patrol Beta, or S SPDG, whatever, something with SPD on it, and it being green, or like him trying on his dad's Ranger Shield or something, something could have happened with that, because that was what could have led us to the next Once and Always special. Um, another thought I had, um, I mentioned this earlier, we don't get the original music composer back, we don't get those rock music anthems and things like that, but we do get good music that helps tell the story, which is something we only got later on in the Mighty Morphin era and before the Zoran era. So, you know, I, I can't be too nitpicky about the music, but it would have been great to hear some of those original guitarists and things like that. Um... Again, I, again, I, I mentioned that we c couldn't get all the original actors and actresses back uh, with Jamie Jo Johnson, Jason David Frank, and uh, uh, Austin uh, Austin St. John. Um, we didn't even get Bulk and Skull. They only got like a, a like a in universe reference. Um, we didn't get any of their teachers or the the principal, which would have been cool if we had gotten any of that. Uh, we did get that Ninja reference on the gravestone where they had uh, Henry Graves, the voice actor that played him, um, and, you know, his birth and death. Uh, I thought that was a nice touch. And again, shout out to David for bringing that up because without you, I would have never caught that reference. And I'm sure there's like a bunch of other Easter eggs and stuff in this that I hadn't even picked up on or seen yet. But I'm going to watch this another three or four times before I do my spoilers review. And I'm going to have the spoiler review maybe sometime later this week, probably next week. I'm really looking forward to it. Like, I don't like doing reviews, but I will do a review for this. Um, God, let me see what, what has been said. Uh, hold on. Uh, nobody important said anything. But anyway, yeah. Um, this was fun. I'm going to plan on doing more lives in the future. Hopefully, I get it worked out better. I know it was a little choppy, um, bad internet connection, whatever. Plus, it's hot in here. I got lights on and stuff. I'm sweating. 
Uh, but this was fun. But yeah, like like this. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Clearly, I got a bunch of Power Ranger stuff coming up. Um, and just thank you guys for just being fans and watching this with me um, and just geeking out with me. Like, I'm happy. Like, I'm happy. I'm really happy. I'm happy. I'm so happy. I don't, I don't even know how else to say it. Uh, I don't even know what else to say. I really don't know what else to say. Um, what did you guys think? Yeah, what did you guys think? Like, did you like it? Did you not like it? Was it too cheesy? Was it exactly as you thought it would be like me? Uh, did you want to see more? Did all your answers get questioned? Like, none of, like, all, some of my questions got answered. Like, all right, Zach was a congressman. He was the first black ranger in Congress. Billy Cranston was on uh, on uh, on the, the Aqua Rangers planet, uh, Aquatar, I want to say. The Equations, he was there. He's married to Sinestra. Um, they even asked, you know, Rock, uh, Adam asked, like, are you going back to Aquatar or whatever? And he's like, no, nah, I got some stuff to tie with Cranston Industries. Then I'll go back to my old adventures. And I'm like, okay, what adventures? Like, when they say something like that, back to their old adventures, that means Billy definitely was a, a ranger again on Aquatar. Maybe not an alien ranger like the alien rangers, which I'm sure they don't call themselves alien rangers. They're probably just rangers, right? Whatever, but I'm sure he helped create uh, Ranger teams on Aquatar, like how he helped create the Turtle powers, I'm assuming, uh, and the Zeo powers, and I'm sure he uh, created other power sets that we may or may not know about. Another thing, I'm glad they did not show Zordon. They alluded to it, they talked about it, it was kind of the reason why Robot Reed is back, but I am definitely glad they did not show Zordon. Zordon didn't come back. Uh, you can build up to something like that. Like, you build up to his death, you can build back up to his resurrection. Um, if they do this plot again, and Billy's trying to yet again find Zordon, the next uh, you know, next person that comes out of that should be Mondo from the King uh, of the Machine Empire, or Divatox, or uh, the spirit of, of uh, Andromeda comes out and takes over the body of Caron, who is the current Lightspeed Pink Ranger. That would be an interesting point to take. Uh, King Mondo could come back. Rita Revolto could come back. You can bring back old school Goldar with this. There's a lot of things they can do with that whole new Z-Wave theory um, that I'm going to spend many episodes talking about. Um, another thing that I'm kind of glad they didn't do, the Morphing Masters. I asked in my, in my top five questions going into Once and Always, has Billy met the Morphing Masters or is he secretly a Morphing Master? They didn't even bring it up. And I'm kind of glad because I think the Morphing Masters, even though it was a throwaway line in MMPR and now in Dino Fury and in the comics, they're like a full-fledged thing. I'm glad that we didn't get to see them there because they're too ex machina, too easy of a story gimmick to kind of bring out and do. I think they did it a little bit too much uh, in Ninja Steel and then again in um, Dino Fury with the Morphing Masters. So, you know, whatever. But let me know what you think. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, the all will not in that. What else can we talk about? The Master Morpher. No mention of that. And I 100% believe Billy had something to do with Tommy's Master Morpher, that that was not a coincidence, that that was created specifically for him. And because, if like, it stands to speak, if Tommy has a Master Morpher, then Rocky has to have one, Adam has to have one, Kat has to have one, Kimberly has to have one, uh, Billy will have to have one, even though he's only switching from Dinosaur Power to Thunder Power to Ninjetti Power. Still, like, other Rangers should have Master Morphers. Like, the entire MMPR cast, all the way up until Andros and In Space, who was just the In Space Ranger, but everybody else that was a Ranger in the, in the original Zoran era should have a Master Morpher. That goes TJ, Cassie, uh, even though Jesse was only the Blue Turbo Ranger. Um, that's going to be fun to ask him at the convention. Um, like, Carlos, everybody, like, uh, all those people... From the Mighty Morphin era, uh, Tanya, she should have a Master Morpher for Zeo Yellow and Turbo Yellow. So, like, I want to see that. That was the one thing I wanted to answer was something with the Master Morpher. Did Billy create the Master Morpher? Do other Rangers have the Master Morpher? I guess if other Rangers had the Master Morpher, they wouldn't need to make proxy power coins. But 
technically Cat never had the pink uh, dinosaur power. She only had the crane power. And I forgot to mention that. It was a huge Easter egg that, like, it took me so many times to remember. But back when they set up that trap for Snizzard and Minotaur and put them on the magnet, Cat was in the crane. Cat was in the crane. She was controlling the crane. And I'm like, I was sitting there like, what? That's weird. She's in the crane. She's in the crane. Why is Kat in the crane? Oh, Kat's in the crane. Because she was the crane pink ranger in Ninjetti. Duh. I can't believe. I can't believe I like that went over my head like five times until like I was just watching it before I, this live. And I was like, wait a minute. Why is she in the crane? She's in the crane. I get it. I get it. Um, so <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm such a nerd. That was awesome. I like that. I really did like that. Um, what else? It's just a lot. Like, I can even still wrap my head around this. I've been thinking about this, and I'm going to have so much more. I'm going to be on all of my social media platforms talking to you guys about it. Uh, I'm going to be bringing this up a lot. Uh, this is definitely, definitely this was good. Um, but I don't know. I'm just a nerd. This is just, like, this is my favorite thing on earth on earth this is my favorite thing and i'm so happy um please this punch that this was that this came out again i do have some criticisms it's not 100 percent perfect but it is still nine times out uh it is still a 10 out of a 10 in my book uh it's four out of six surviving rangers it's it's the bee's knees i want to see more like i'm super psyched for cosmic fury now and what they have to bring to the table after seeing this, like, I, I love the campiness and the cheesiness and that the, the suits look bad and the acting wasn't great and the CGI was terrible. I loved all that about it. They knew what they were doing. They did all this intentionally. Um, what's another? Oh, so in the command center, they have a viewing globe, but not one time did they behold the viewing globe. You know, I just kind of wanted something like that, too. Uh, that would have been nice. Billy could have been like, or even Alpha could be like, behold the viewing globe. But no, they was using the monitors to monitor everything the whole time. Whatever. Huge missed opportunity right there. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, I'll have, a, <laughs> I did a three minute spoiler free review on TikTok and I'm going to post that video up in three parts on the channel. So stay tuned for that. Part one's already up. Um, and I also have the nerd question of the day. Go watch that short too. Um, and just thank you. Thank you guys for being Power Rangers fans. Thank you guys for just watching me rant for like an hour about a kid show. I'm still a kid at heart and I still love this, but that's it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go calm down. I'm too lit right now. So later. <sighs>